Yay, everyone. So Jenny, you can um, take it away. Can you share your screen okay? Yeah, hold on one second. I have too many windows up. I don't want to um, completely overwhelm anyone with the nonsense that I have on my computer. Oh, okay. Let's see. Share. I also need to make sure I share the sound because there's a little video I'm going to show. And let's do this. Okay, can folks see? Okay, Sam, thank you yes. for your nod. Wonderful. Um, okay, let me start this at the beginning. A very good place to start. Hello. Thank you all so much for joining me. What is happening? I didn't want it like this. Okay. Hopefully it just says bullet journal basics with Yeah, it's off um, note. It's okay. mode now. Great. I uh I told Sam last week, I was like, I'm gonna use PowerPoint for this. And I know I may regret it. Um, so that is what I'm doing here. Um, all right, so welcome. Thank you all so much for joining me today. I too am really just getting used to presenting in Teams. Um, so I, it would not be shocking to me if I met if I messed something up um, in terms of the chat or not sharing things correctly. So please feel free to interrupt me if. Anything is weird or confusing. Um, but yes, I'm super excited to talk to you today about bullet journaling. Um, and I'm just going to jump in and get started. One thing I'll say I really liked about PowerPoint is that they have a ton of really nice stock photos, um, which I was surprised by. Um, so this is just like a stock photo that I found in their like content library um, of someone writing. And I thought, they look like they're bullet journaling, so I'll use it. Okay, um, so here is my plan for today. I'm going to talk to you about what bullet journaling is, why I do it, how it works generally, and then there will be time to ask questions and or sort of try out the system if you find that you might be interested in it. So the what what is bullet journaling we are going to watch a short video from the creator of the bullet journal method his name is Ryder carroll um, i'm going to be going back over um, a number of the uh, concepts that he covers in this video um, later in uh, the presentation but for sort of universal design for learning purposes um, i wanted to give you multiple options to kind of get uh, the information of course again he literally wrote the book the bullet journal method um so he knows what he's talking about so here we go and please feel free to put or not just feel free please put in the chat if you're not able to hear it um, and i will be sharing these slides so you can get back to some of this stuff later i bet you can't hear it now because it's not working cool let me let me grab um a different way to get to this why isn't it working having a great having a great time already um all right let me find my gosh y'all this is embarrassing i'm glad this is being recorded um let me just end this see how it should play the video all right i guess i just don't know powerpoint that well let me pull the video up and then get it over here on the screen will not make you look at my email again that is stressful okay so if you go to the bullet journal website which is bulletjournal.com um, there's a bunch of information there um, but i'm just going to click this watch free tutorial we keep track of things the things we've done, the things we need to do, the things. OK, just just a quick check. Are you all able to hear it? If you may. OK, great. Thanks. We aspire to. There's a lot to keep track of. There are plenty of apps for that, but I needed a system flexible enough to handle whatever I threw at it and fast enough that it wouldn't get in the way. Hi, I'm Ryder, and this is a brief updated overview of the bullet journal. It's an analog system I designed to track the past organize the present, and plan for the future. Does this sound good? Okay, let me show you how to set it up. Though this overview features a custom notebook designed for bullet journaling, the system works just as well in the notebook of your choice. To get started, flip to your first blank spread. 
this will be your index. To set it up, simply title both pages as index. Now, let's set up your future log. To set it up, turn to the next blank spread. Title both pages as future log. There are many ways to set this up. Here's a simple six month version. Count the amount of lines on your page. Now divide that number by three. With a ruler, draw a line across the spread. Add the months to each box. When you're done, add your page numbers and add the future log back into your index. Okay, turn to your next blank spread. This will be your monthly log. Add the name of the month on both pages. The left will be your monthly calendar. Write down all the dates of the month, then add the first letter of the days. Okay, that's the calendar. The right page is your monthly task list. Write down all the things you need to get done this month. Before each task, draw a task bullet, which is just a simple dot. Add the page numbers and then add this month back into your index. The monthly log provides you with a bird's eye view of everything you need to get done in a month and the time you have to do it in. Okay, let's set up your daily log. Start by entering the day's date. Now you can start adding entries. Entries are logged using short bulleted sentences. Each entry goes into one of three categories, tasks, indicated by a dot bullet, events, indicated by a circle bullet, and notes, indicated by the dash bullet. If a task is really important, place a little star to the left of it. This is known as a signifier. Signifiers add extra meaning to bullets, in this case, priority. This is known as rapid logging. It makes capturing and organizing information really fast. Now we've set up all the core modules for the bullet journal, the index, the future log, the monthly log, and the daily log. Now I'll show you how they all work together. At the end of each month, set up your next monthly log. Scan your daily logs for open tasks. X out the ones that you've completed. Now take a moment and assess the remaining open tasks. Ask yourself, is this still worth my time? If it's not, strike it out. If it is worth your time in the short term, turn that entry's task dot into a right arrow and copy the entry into the new monthly log. If a task is due months from now, turn the task dot into a left arrow then copy that entry into the corresponding month in the future log. This process is known as migration. Migration will help you weed out distractions. It's designed to help you focus on the things that are worth your time. It's the difference between being busy and being productive. Sometimes you'll have related tasks and notes. To help organize related items, let's create a collection. First, go to your next blank page and give it a topic and number the pages. Now migrate all the notes and or tasks into that collection. Now index that collection for reference later. Collections are a great way to organize shopping lists or ongoing projects or classes. Okay, that's it for the basic overview. For more tips and tricks, please visit bulletjournal.com. Please like and subscribe to this channel, and thanks for watching. Okay, so that's just an introduction again from writer Carol, the person who created this method. Um, let me get back in here. Okay, um, there is a book that goes along with it. There is the website that I showed you. They have all kinds of stuff that you have to pay money to get, which I have not done. Um, but they also have uh, lots of articles and videos that are free. So if you find that this is something that you're interested in and kind of want to see how to uh, potentially adapt it for your own practice, um, there's lots of great resources out there. And I also will um, be sharing with you some of my favorite bullet journal content creators um, later in the presentation. So I have lots of resources that will be included in the slides, which again, I will give you a link to. OK, so this is just a, uh, a note from their about page, and this is one of the things that drew me to this um, to this particular methodology. So um, it's best described as a mindfulness practice disguised as a productivity system, and I find that to be useful in sort of both ways there. So I find that it is helpful for me in terms of being mindful about 
um, planning and about productivity and about just sort of organizing things, but that it it, it does also just kind of help me get things done and figure out what um, is important and why. Um, and as they mentioned in the video there, um, one of the things about this process that makes that helpful is that you're kind of constantly being um, reminded to reflect on tasks. The like he talks about migration. During migration, you can say, okay, this task is still open. Do I even really need to do that? And if I do, then I copy it over. And if I don't, then I've had the opportunity to be kind of intentional about not copying it over. So just wanted to include that quote here. So getting into the why, why I love bullet journaling so much. Um, I had tried bullet journaling several times. I think the book came out in some maybe 2013, or 2014, I can't remember exactly, but it's been around 10 years, let's say. Um, and I had tried it several different times um, and just didn't stick with it. And so I don't know exactly what happened. Well, maybe it was actually, maybe I do know what happened. It, it was in summer of 2021 that I started using it really regularly. Um, and that summer is when I found out that I didn't, because of medications that I take, that I didn't have any um, antibodies for COVID, despite having been vaccinated multiple times. Um, and so I had to kind of work out something where I was still remote for that year because I had virtually no protection um, from COVID-19. And so one of the things that I was finding challenging was it, some separation between like, I'm at work in my house, sitting at a desk in the middle of my home, and then kind of turning work off and being at home in my home. Um, and so for some reason, it just really clicked with me at that time and made it a lot easier um, for me to just stick with this method. So I've been doing this really uh, consistently since uh, for over two years now, um, and also had incorporated some elements of it from times I had tried it in the past. The number one reason I like it is because it's easy. Um, all you have to have is a notebook and something to write with. Um, if you are searching online for bullet journal inspiration or bullet journal images on social media or whatever, you will see all kinds of beautiful, fancy things. And I love looking at those and I think those are awesome. Um, but you don't have to have any of that fancy artistic stuff, beautiful lettering, lots of drawing, um, anything like that is just sort of extra. Um, all you really need is a notebook and you need a uh, something to write with. I like a pen. I have a number of recommendations for my favorite notebooks and pens also later in the presentation. So don't worry if that's what you came here for. You can also start whenever you want to. You are not um, limited to, you know, what you might be with a dated calendar or planner. Um, so I started uh, in July of 2021 and I have been going since then. Um, but you can start whenever you want to. You don't have to wait until January. You don't have to wait until the start of the academic year. You don't even have to wait till the start of the month or the week. Um, everything you need, he says this in the video, but I really want to emphasize this. Everything you need can be all in one place. And you don't really have to worry about, I don't know if this has happened to any of you. Um, actually, I know it's happened at least to Brown because Brown and I have talked about this, like getting really into a productivity app, putting all kinds of time and effort into getting it set up and then it goes away or it updates and your phone can't use it anymore. Um, that doesn't happen with a notebook. It's just there for us. So these are some of the easy bits about it. I also really like the fact that it's flexible. So it does have a core set of what he calls modules, which is what we went through in that video, but you can really experiment and figure out what works best for you. So for example, um, I have two bullet journals. I use one for work and one for my personal life. In my personal bullet journal, everything happens just based on the date. So I don't have an index in it because the index would just be like July, August. September. Um, and since I know that it goes in that sort of reasonable, like, you know, chronological order, I don't have to have an index. My work bullet journal does have an index because I have different things throughout it that I might need to quickly figure out where to find. So you can really figure out what works best for you. The other thing is that because you're planning at most a month out in terms of like your like more in-depth stuff like you saw the monthly logs and daily logs in the video you can totally change your format so if i try something in july or tried something in july that didn't work uh, my august could look totally different i could just leave it off or i could try something different um 
I also like that you can stop and start wherever you want to or need to. Um, I have had a tendency in the past to just sort of bail out on using a, a dated planner and then after a couple of days be like, well, I can never start it again now because I've already wasted all these pages. That doesn't happen with a bullet journal. You just turn to the next page and keep going. Um, as I mentioned, I do have two separate journals, and so to me that's part of the flexibility. And one of the reasons for that, again, is that like I like to be able to sort of close my work journal and say work is over now. And then I can open my personal journal and be in my personal life. Um, so that's kind of how I started with that system, and I have found that it works really well for me. A lot of people have everything all together, and it works for them. It's again just all about experimenting. The other, the next reason is that it forces me to slow down. I am a really anxious person um, and I am also a person like all of you. I have a ton of stuff going on. I have lots of events and appointments, lots of tasks and meetings and ideas that come up and plans that I need to keep track of and it's really easy for me to get overwhelmed. And one of the things that happens to me when like just the act of physically writing something down I have to be slower and intentional, um, and that helps me be a little bit more mindful about what I'm doing. It helps me to just kind of take a break and think through what is it that I need to work on and why, um, and then it helps me just be a lot calmer um, and more mindful and intentional. And then uh, because my memory is inconsistent, now I'm really good at remembering certain things. Quotes from TV shows. A story that you told me five years ago that was weird and quirky. So things that to me that happen as part of um, like a narrative storytelling and things like that, I remember really well. But if there's a task I need to do next week and I haven't written it down, uh, it's really hard for me to remember it. Um, and also, as I think most people know, uh, just if not, I have a chronic illness. I have a, an autoimmune disease and. Um, one of the things that happens to me with that is that I'm I'm sort of always in a state of some level of pain, for example, or some level of fatigue. Um, and so day to day changes, like when I try to think back, like, oh, what was July like? How much pain was I in? How much fatigue was I having? What kind of health issues were coming up? All the days can kind of blend together. So if I am being intentional about bullet journaling, it's been really easy for me to do a better job of tracking. Oh, I actually had this kind of spike in pain or this was a better day. Um, and I have all that information um, and I can look at patterns and other things that I wouldn't sort of remember or notice just because there's always that baseline level, um, and that's really helped me in communicating with medical professionals um, to say, uh, you know, oh, I had a, a really hard time this one week, and here's what I noticed. Um, and so it's been super helpful for me with tracking things like that, when otherwise it just, again, kind of all blurs together. Um, and then the other thing is having everything in a single system, I find really lightens my cognitive load. So instead of having like a planner, and um, a place to put my meeting notes and a goal setting, you know, tool. I kind of have everything all together. And I just find that that's a lot easier because um, I'm not having to remember what to take where. So getting into the how, I'm going to just review some of the concepts that were discussed in the video, and then we're going to get into some uh, examples from my own bullet journals. So these are the core modules. Again, he mentioned these in the video. There's the index. And one of the things I would encourage you to do is kind of, even if you don't go all in on the system, having an index for a, a, a notebook or journal is like super duper helpful um, because it can be a really easy place for you to flip to if you're like, I don't remember uh, when we had that meeting about that event that we're planning. I don't remember what day it was, so I can't find it in my notebook. But if you have an index, you can say, oh, that's on page 76. And often this does require uh, numbering pages, um, which is a actually kind of nice meditative task if you have a journal or notebook that is not already numbered. The future log is a place to keep track of those future events, future tasks. Um, a monthly log is a staple of this. 
and it typically includes some kind of calendar um, and a task list. I do mine really similarly to, for my work journal at least, similar to what you saw in the video, um, but there are people who draw out visual calendars. It's kind of, again, whatever works for you. The idea is just that you have a space where you can put down what's happening in the month and then what you know you need to get done. And then the daily log is a space for, as he called it, rapid logging, um, recording any tasks, events, notes during a given day. I really like there's a, in the video, there's a note that he had written as an example that was um, a group of pugs is called a grumble. Um, just those kind of things that you might want to remember um, that you probably wouldn't otherwise. So these are the four sort of modules. Some terms that go along with them um the bullets are the 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 end this is like the heart of the system the indicators that are used to differentiate between tasks events and notes so in the original system there is a specific set of bullets and it's the one he once he uses in the video so like just a dot for a task an open circle for an event um, and a dash for an idea or a note um, but you can choose your own adventure if you like to use boxes instead of uh, open circles, if you like triangles instead of squares, um, whatever it is that you like to do, as long as you're consistent so that you can know what is, it only needs to mean anything to you. Um, even if you're like, you know, doing it for Instagram, functionally, it only has to uh, make any kind of sense to you. The signifiers can be used to add meaning to those bullets. I almost never use signifiers, but an example from the video is when he put a star next to a task or an asterisk next to a task to indicate that it's important. Migration, again, is that process of moving things from one collection or one log to another. And collections are any pages that are connected by a topic or a function. So monthly log is a collection. Um, but in his example, again, like a list of books to be read, that's a collection. Uh, in my, I give an example here, I like to keep a list of webinars or like conference presentations that I want to go back and watch because again, I never remember. So I have that as a collection in my bullet journal. So that all may just seem super duper theoretical. So we're going to go into my work journal. Um, my photography of some of these pages is not great. So I'll just warn you about that. Um, and uh, I've also done some uh, kind of questionable de-identification of any references to people um, unless I had their like direct permission to include them. So some of this is going to look a little weird, but you'll see what I mean. So my work journal, how I use this, my real priorities here are I just want to keep track of short term events, tasks, deadlines and meeting notes. So anything that's kind of happening in the moment or in this week, that's my primary purpose. But I also use it to reflect on some longer term things like my annual goals or longer term goals, uh, keep track of any ideas, keep track of. So, for example, I have a um, spread in my bullet journal and a spread just refers to like two pages together, a spread that's called Ask Amy, that Amy, you know, my supervisor, um, where I just write down anything I have that I know I need to ask Amy. And then when I'm meeting with Amy, I go to the Ask Amy spread and I see, OK, what it, what did I need to ask her about? Um, and then I mark them off when I'm done. So this is that's an important piece of it. But if I were to only be able to use it for one thing, it would be just keeping track of like what's happening this week and this month. Um, to me, that's the most important function that it serves. So here's an example. Here's my key that I use. This is just on the inside of my journal. Um, there's a grid guide so I know like how tall the pages are in case I want to split things into boxes. Um, but my key is that I use pretty much exactly what he discussed in the video. I use an open circle for events, a dot for tasks. X means something is completed. Um, the right arrow thingy means it's migrated like to the next week. He also shows using a left arrow thingy. I'm sure there's a name for that. Um, that means you put it in your future log for later. Um, I don't do that very often, so I didn't include it in my key. But if I if I did, it would just still be a sort of migration indicator. Um, a note is a dash, and then I also have this additional one that's a little open square. That is when I um, write down something that I want to read. So that's my key. 
and this is my index. Um, so you can again kind of get a sense that of my stuff here and I just realized I don't actually think I have the page numbers written down for my Ask Amy section that I just used as an example, but it's in there somewhere. I'll have to go back and add it. Um, but you can see it's a mix of um, like monthly setups. So June 2022 was my first month in this particular journal, and that started on what I have labeled as page one. Um, you can see I had some planning for going off a full professor. I had some tutorial planning. I have a lot of different conference presentation planning in here. Um, and notes from a book I was reading for a course I was taking, plans for a chapter that Maggie and I were just working on. So those are some of my sort of collections that aren't necessarily month or time specific, um, but you can kind of see. And also I'll say also projects. So this LES wiki migration, this was something I was doing for the literatures and English section of ACRL. Um, I'm their web editor and we had this old wiki that we were trying to get rid of. Um, so I had a bunch of planning um, for that particular project and sort of project management notes um, in that spread. So that's what my index looks like. Um, this journal that I am in, how many pages does it have? It's like close to 365 because it's supposed to be a day to a page, which is not how I use it. So I have 355 pages in here. Um, I am right now on page 205. Um, so again, got to update this. Um, so I don't think I will use all of this space that I have set aside for my index, but I could if I needed to. Here's my future log. Again, I have um, marked some stuff out that had specific names very professionally. Look at that. It's almost like you can't even tell where the information used to be. Um, but my future log, I, I like to have calendars because I it helps me visualize kind of what the month looks like. You can actually see on my calendars here. I have these gray dots on days that are either holidays or days that were closed. Um, I had information about like this past month, July, I had two um, infusions, which is part of my medical treatment. I give a webinar. Um, I had another presentation um, and I have stuff uh, here about deadlines that I want to make sure I remember as well as other dates that are important. Like I need to know that August 15th is when classes start. I need to know that October 9th and 10th is when our fall break is. And I again have a lot of um, chronic health conditions. So uh, I go to the doctor a lot and I try to uh, keep track of those in here as well as in my personal bullet journal so I know to plan around it. So when I set up a month like I'm going to do towards towards the end of this, if there's time I'm going to set up my August spread, um, then I need to have these dates included in there. So I'll refer back to um, my future log for the year when I'm setting that up. Here is a monthly log that I was really proud of because I thought it looked pretty. Um, I used markers and and tiny little washi tape down here at the bottom. This is just decorative tape, um, but you can kind of see how I have this set up. So I have uh, it's just a version of what he did in the video. So I've got my linear calendar here that's just written out um, dates and then days of the week. I had goals, and so for me, goals are like the larger things. Um, that I'm working on in the month and then tasks are a little bit more broken down. So you can see tasks I planned and then I had a note section here um, just for things I wanted to remember. And here's an example of where I've used that open square bullet um, for a book that someone told me about that's all about um, good discussion prompts that I thought I might want to look at later. So sometimes it looks like this. Again, this is one I'm proud of. And then realistically also here was April's, which I wrote some stuff in and never looked at again, it seems. Because definitely some stuff happened. I also had more than one goal and presumably I completed some tasks, but they're not in there. Um, and that happens to me all the time. Sometimes I just forget to go back to my monthly or I'm just I, ironically, sometimes when you're really busy, you don't fill things out as much. Um, but just to, to give you some some real life there. Um, again, <laughs> some very clever redaction here. Um, this is a particular week um, example. So 
Uh, there's no official weekly log as part of the bullet journal system, but I always have my weeks set up this way uh, because usually at the beginning of the week, I will do some just kind of brainstorming of what I've got coming up and what I need to do. Um, and uh, I add to that as the week goes on. So if things aren't necessarily specific to a day, um, but I still know I need to remember them because again, sort of being a, an extension of my brain is part of what I use this for. Um, so this is how I set up. I usually have a column over on the left and I just split my pages in half because I like how it looks. There's no real rhyme or reason to it. Um, but you can kind of see uh, also sometimes as the week goes by, I don't mark things off as much, um, but you can see how I have used things. I see, I just got a notification that there's a hand raise. Is it's that me. Um, hey. Yeah, I don't think you're seeing the chat, right? Oh, no, I'm not. I'm sorry. No, it's fine. I just, someone asked a question and I figured this might be a good time. Yeah, well, this is a great time to answer it. But um, <sighs> Carolyn asked, what type of pen are you using to highlight that doesn't cause the writing ink to bleed? Oh, wow, Carolyn, I have so many. We could talk about this forever. Um, with the highlights, I if I'm gonna if I know I'm gonna highlight, I use a pen. I'm sure it won't even show up. Maybe it will a little bit. Um, this is a Sarasa mark on pen. I can send you a link. Um, this is really good at not bleeding uh, or smearing when you use highlighter over it. I got the chat up now. I figured it out. Sorry about that. Um, but I also regularly use and these are in my list um, like waterproof archival pens or drawing pens. So this is um, the Pigma Microns from Sakura that I use a lot and they're archival ink um, and they do an incredible job. I also use these for drawing. I like to draw um, and that's what I do a lot of my drawing. Thank you for asking what I think is a critically important question. I will talk about pens anytime. You just let me know. I love them. Um, okay, did I have another weekly or daily log? Here's another one. Same kind of deal. Um, really redacted a lot here. <laughs> Basically, again, anytime someone's name was mentioned, if I hadn't talked to them about it. Um, and then I also things change a lot. So I had this set up, this Tuesday set up on Monday, um, but then I was sick, so I couldn't be there. And then I came in late the next day because I was still, I was having a flare, I think is what was happening. Um, so you can kind of see that I just move my planning around. And that's another reason I like the flexibility of this system. And then here's an example of a collection that's not date specific. Uh, we were preparing for, a, I was preparing for our departmental retreat in uh, December and I uh, had done some reading um, and was doing some brainstorming related to the retreat and I had these all together um, in this one particular spread so that I could easily get back to it um, and this was really helpful to me um, as I was working through my planning. So I don't have very much from my personal journal in here because it's pretty personal. Like I said, I track a lot of like health stuff. There's also like budget stuff, all kinds of personal things in there. But I did just set everything up for August. So I do have a couple of, of um, images. Um, but just to tell you how I use my personal journal in a way that's a little bit different, my priorities there are keeping track of some of the same kind of things like events, tasks, ideas, but all in sort of my personal life. Um, so also help me keep track of birthdays, um, like my car inspection is due in August. It helps me remember that August is when I need to get that stuff done, um, financial deadlines, anything like that. Um, but I also use it for a lot of memory keeping. Um, so I record like pretty much every day. If you were, if I were to look back at my personal bullet journal, I'd be able to tell you what I did that day what I watched on TV, what I had for dinner, what I was reading, um, if I took a walk, things like that, um, sort of the more day-to-day um, -day stuff, um, again, because it helps me kind of separate those things in my mind. Um, and then like big events um, and like even bigger memories, you know, like a birthday or something like that. 
I also do a lot of habit tracking and as I mentioned also keep a lot of health information as well as progress toward my longer term goals and um, one of my projects that I did last year and that I can, did again this year was um, something that I took from one of the bullet journal creators that I will have linked later um, but it is a 23 how did she say it 23 23s in 2023 so 23 things I wanted to do 23 times each during 2023 so like uh, one I have already completed is watching 23 episodes of television uh, reading 23 books um, stuff like that and then it was also like making 23 monetary donations using 23 sticker sheets because I have a like really big sticker collection all that kind of stuff and I do all of that tracking within my bullet journal um, as part of my sort of like daily practice. So I'm just going to show you my setup for August. Um, this is what I don't have anything in it yet. That's why it was a perfect opportunity to take some pictures. I use just an expanded version of the same monthly log. By the way, this is washi tape. I did not draw these beautiful tiny stationary items. Um, but I love them, so I used it. Um, so I usually have a cover page as a easy like separator because again, I don't really use an index in my personal bullet journal since it's almost all chronological. Um, so I usually do some sort of cover image of some kind. Then I have my monthly log, same kind of way that I have it in my work journal. But then I separate out my goals and tasks. I give more space for those. Um, and then I also do a gratitude every day and I track habits, um, which I do using um, a using a set of pins that are called dot markers. It's just a marker with a dot end. Um, and I have a color coding system so that, you know, pink is writing in my journal and I give myself a little pink dot here. That's how the that stuff works. And then same kind of thing with my weeklies. Um, that is also uh, just an expanded kind of version of what you see with work, but I set it up work. I just like go, I keep going as I go. Like um, I don't set up the whole week in advance. Whereas for my personal, I do set up um, each day has like a column, same kind of thing. I split the page um, and then I also write down meals here. So I don't do that in my work bullet journal because I usually don't need to know. So there's some insight into me and my journals. Um, I am happy to answer any questions folks have, um, and I will uh, just pause here to see if people have any questions. Rachel Olson. Um, you may have said this already, so I apologize. My internet has sort of been in and out. Um, I am wondering if lazy people like me can buy pre-made bullet journals like a like a one that already has the stuff written like outlined that is such a good question um yes in a couple a couple of different ways there are actually tons of people on etsy who will make you a custom bullet journal um it's pretty expensive um but you can be like here's what i need and they set the whole thing up for you um but you can also buy um one of the brands I like, let me see, I have a list here of where I buy my supplies. One of the brands I like is uh, Loic Term 1917, um, and they have a bullet journal branded journal that you can buy that is not fully set up, but it already has like the future log, it has space for a future log, it has space for the index. Um, it comes with a bunch of like, it comes with a guide um, that you can just kind of keep with you as you're filling it in and also a bunch of like stickers and stuff too and they're really nice um, so that is one way that you can do it but you can get custom ones made um, and they're pretty fancy from what I from what I've seen any other questions yeah you can definitely get a planner that has a lot of those elements um my issue with i could just like i've had planners that i've liked for a while including the panda planner which i really liked um and it was nice because it was also undated so i didn't have to um feel guilty again if i was like missed stuff um but to me it's really like all about the customization that makes it worthwhile for me to do 
the bullet journal method. But like Rachel, for example, like for a, a monthly or weekly setup, I set those. I mean, those maybe take me five minutes. Um, so they do like it definitely is a time investment, but especially once you get that stuff at the beginning set up, um, it's not as much as it seems, especially again, if you're looking at social media and people are like, it took me three hours to draw this beautiful glitter jellyfish image that is my cover page. Um, those are lovely, um, but I don't have that kind of time. Yeah, thanks, Suzanne. Yeah, that's it's been really big for me because I also know like, um, if I want to write something down, I know where to put it. It's not like, oh, I have a notebook where I keep all my all the book recommendations that people have given me because uh, I can always just put it on my daily and I can move it somewhere else or copy it somewhere else if I need to. Um, and it's nice to not have to think about that or like do any kind of analysis. So while people are thinking about questions or comments, um, here are some of my favorite places to buy supplies. I'm going to get the link to this um, slide share sh show in a minute here and give it to you. Um, Jet Pence, my number one favorite. It's a great place to buy all kinds of things. Um, Archer and Olive is where I get my personal journals. They're expensive, but they're fancy and they have um, really nice 160 GSM paper, which is very thick. Um, so, uh, yeah, I get lots of stuff at Target, Etsy, office supply stores, um, art supply stores, like Jerry's, if you're, if you've ever been to Jerry's, it's great. I get a lot of pens from there. Cute stationery stores like Pen and Pillar, which is in High Point, and I recommend it. They also, um, make bullet journals. I bought, um, a notebook from them that uses a dot grid, which is what I prefer for mine. Um, and like they went in the back and made it and brought it to me and it was beautiful. Um, Josh asks, Joshua asks, do you think that your weeklies make your monthly sections less used? You mentioned not using the monthly consistently in the weekly. Is that official? Yes, I think so. Um, so I guess to me, that's kind of like the in-between because I think about things more frequently on a week to week basis than I think of them a month at a time. Um, so I would say I usually use my monthly as like a place for deadlines, a place for noting if I have um, like like major events, like if I'm giving a presentation and I want to make sure I'm remembering what day it's on. Um, but a lot of times I end up not even putting any tasks or anything on there because um, they're just in my weeklies. So that's a great question. Um, here's even more detail about my actual favorite supplies. My work journal that I've been showing you these beautiful, incredible pictures from is Astrology. Um, I mentioned the Loic term. They have, um, they're kind of the original. I think that was what Ryder Carroll, the founder of the method, I think that's what he had been using from the beginning. I use A5 size, um, which is uh, kind of like a standard journal, what you would expect a journal to be. I mentioned Archer and Olive. I love them. The journals are fancy. Um, my current personal journal is an Archer and Olive journal, and it has um, a really pretty watering can on the front with some flowers. So cute. Uh, I use black gel pen for almost all of my writing. I have so many favorites, but I limited it to four here. The Inner Gel Clinic is my number one favorite. Um, but I have a few others and I didn't include this, uh, the Sarasa mark on on this list, but um, I'm going to add it because a uh, good point from Carolyn about stuff that doesn't smear because this is really good about not smearing. <laughs> and then I just couldn't stop. So my favorite extra stuff, all kinds of fine liner pens, all of these that I have are waterproof or at least water resistant. My favorite highlighters, they're zebra mild liners. My favorite like, drawing markers are the Tombow dual brush pens. Um, I have so many, I use so many stickers in my personal book journal, rarely in work. Work for me, it's pretty much just the notebook and a black pen, and then I bring in my highlighters. Um, but in my personal journal, it's like sticker central, and I also use a lot of washi tape there.
Here's some of my favorite channels. If you're really into just like the mostly functional part, the bullet journal official channel is really good. Um, periodically they do these live, like long live streams where writer Carol shows you like what his, um, like his migration from month to month. It's really interesting to get that kind of insight. Um, and then there's so many people that do really awesome artistic de decorative, but still functional spreads. Um, and many of these people also post on other stuff like productivity or art and artistic practice, stationary favorites, more. Yeah, Art Journal is having a good sale right now, Sam. Good call. And that's all I have. Um, let me end the show here and let me stop sharing. Maybe <laughs> I think I did. Um, and let me get a link to this. If I can make OneDrive do the thing I want it to do. Uh, and then see if there are any other questions or comments. I'd love to know. Are you, do you think you might try it? I'm curious. I do a very non bullet journal method, like using stuff like Panda and pre set up things. So I don't think I could ever go full on into the beauty that you do. But I love watching um, videos and like presentations like this to think through how it could work for me. Um, but yeah, and I think that's like, really important right because if you're like but I like it's all like what whatever you whatever works for you is what you should do um so I mean a lot of people um in like on YouTube and in planner communities like have specific um planners that they love so like this year I bought this really expensive Hobonichi cousin planner um uh, because of YouTube um it was sixty dollars I used it for part of one month. I hated it. And so I was like, okay, I guess this just drives home the bullet journal method for me. I kept trying to force myself to use it. And then I was getting mad at myself about forcing myself to use it. Um, and I was like, what if I just stick with this notebook that I paid $25 for, which I think is still expensive for a notebook, but it has now lasted me over a year um, and kind of keeps me going. So. One thing is that I do have a key, like the way you do for my planners, my analog planners, because I do like to have analog planners, you know, where I do the like, you know, circle as an event, um, dashes and notes, like, you know, because I think that was like recommended in that original video where like a lot of bullet journey videos and like heart is like a personal thing, you know, something fun you're doing later in the day or whatever. Um, migrate you know, or yeah. whatever. So anyway, I have found those like key, you know, it's something just for my brain useful to know how to differentiate my planners, my analog planners. Cause I do like and to I have like, an analog planner and a digital account, you know, like both. Yeah. And I didn't mention that, but like, of course I use digital planning tools. Um, I don't, I, I mean, I'm at least attempting to use Outlook calendar, um, doing my best. Um, but I, one of the things that you just said there, Sam, is like, it, it, you don't you don't have to use the whole method, right? So um, if a key is really helpful for you, and a lot of people do exactly what you just did, they have their own, like, um, they use a diamond for a particular kind of event or doctor's appointment or whatever in their calendar. Um, and then the one thing that I will say that I have heard from a lot of people is that they like the index. So like they don't use any other part of the system, but having an index so that they know where to go back later and find notes or find ideas um, is something that is um, helpful to them. So um, yeah, there are a lot of different components. I, when I moved offices recently, I like found all these old notebooks where I had tried the bullet journal method like soon after the book came out and again just didn't stick with it um so I don't even know why this is the time in my life when it has worked but um now it has spoiled me for for other options um yeah yeah 
Well, I appreciate so many of you coming and visiting and seeing this ultimately peek inside my brain is what my bullet journals are just my brain, but less gross. Well, as people are saying, thank you. And I'm gonna take this pause just to say uh, with eight minutes left or whatnot, um, that uh, we're almost in August. Um, and this is, I think, a great reminder. Jenny and I just did a ULVLC session for like NCLA STEM link, because I think it's called, mm -hmm. um, just about like growing community in the pandemic. And um, so a nice reminder that ULVLC sessions can be about work, but they can also be about stuff like this, um, you know, that could be related to work or it could be about creating a journal in your own life um, away from work. I like the idea of having two separate things. It's made uh, a big difference for me. Yeah, like I don't think I, I don't personally think I could merge the two, but I, like you said, I've seen videos where people have like merged, have like just like one big one and I, I respect see, it. So then I would like be home and I would look and I'd be like, I got to do laundry tonight and be like, oh God, I have that meeting tomorrow. I have to think yeah. about it. And that's not what I'm looking for. Like, yeah. A lot just, of the people just, I've seen who do that have, um, I think kind of like a freelance job, you know what I yeah. mean? Where like mm -hmm. the, their hours aren't necessarily like set in the same way that a lot division. of ours are. Yeah. yeah like that, that, you know, like maybe they do have a meeting you know, at night or what, you know what I mean? I've just seen a lot of like freelance writers, um, which makes sense how that would work for that kind of setting. But um, yeah, so anyway, um, so anyway, uh, just a reminder that if you have a ULVLC idea, whether it is related to your work or um, something that you think is just great for us all to hear about, um, just let Jenny or I know and we will uh, muddle through this team's life together and get it scheduled and do all that for you. Um, so you can just email us um, and uh, that's it. Happy last day of July. Oh yeah, I'm gonna be setting up my um, August monthly log today. So if anybody needs inspiration later, just reach out to me and I'm happy to encourage you. Yeah, like a, I like that idea, set up day, set up session. Yeah, a day would be amazing. I mean, happen, yeah, but. sure. <laughs> um okay everyone we'll have a great week happy monday um and uh thank you jenny and have a great day everyone week bye. thanks everyone bye